Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called The Humans Are Forced from the Battlefield, written by Credible333. The truth! Davek's ears barely heard the demand through his own screams of pain. He almost gave it to them, restrained only by the knowledge nothing would anger them more. Uh, the truth is, I am Lord Davik, Sawbreaker, rightful ruler from here to... Once again, red-hot iron sizzled on his flesh. The reptile-like face that confronted him was turning blue. Amazing how many of the intelligent race's faces turned blue-colored when angry. The translation crystal was turning the same color. Apparently, they didn't expect to need to use it for so long. Another indication that they came to eliminate, not enslave. They weren't going to be talking to us after their victory. We are our grateful ruler of nowhere. You humans are a disgrace, hiring mercenaries from other races as mainline troops. You truly are the weakest of the military races. But you will tell me where the additional forces came from. Okay, here is the truth. This offensive of yours has defeated my main force with my best warriors. I counted up the number who fled from each battle. Would you agree the total is 3,000? I don't have more than 3,500, and I can prove it. There are about 5,800 square kilometers of arable land and 14,400 of various wilderness, lakes, and wasteland. In the human empire, about a third of the Sakari Dominion. Through your incompetent spies, you learned that our lands are two-thirds as productive as yours. Your agricultural slave species with better growth magic. But there are other factors. Your lands support about three tons of AG slaves per arable square kilometer, and need about five tons of them for each Sakari warrior, correct? I know your own internal figures separate how man Hota, Sinha, and Leva are needed, but each species produces about as much food per mass. Humans are 80% Sakari mass, so you expect one human for each four tons of ag slave. So one per two square kilometers, or 2,900. Yet, this offensive has defeated more than that in battle. And it's not your only attack, is it? So the ones we fight now must be mercenaries you hired from other races. We saw some Atri and some Kene, but there were others the size and the shape of humans. Who are they? How many do you have? How did you get here so quickly? Were our plans betrayed? Normally, I eat slaves, but I will eat a human supreme dominator just as eagerly. Part of the reason they got here so quickly is how we use our horses. We have a method that allows us to increase their effective long-term speed. The reason it works is the same reason our army has so few animals compared to yours. We can avoid tiring out our animals by substituting a method every human knows. Tell us the method! It won't save you. We do it much better. Each of us trains for years to master this technique, even before full-growth humans can outmatch the greatest Sakari warriors. Well, aside from the few sickly individuals who you might beat at this. AZ ran into the room. Davik had heard the Z. Apparently, they were night hunters before they, like all other races on Nova, were kidnapped and left here. They looked like someone had starved a bear, then stuck four octopus tentacles around its face. Apparently, the Sakari used them like humans used the Atri, as night guards and light recon. They were about one-tenth of the Sakari force. They did, however, have an advantage the Atri didn't. If Supreme Dominated Calm had actually watched his own auxiliaries, he would know what was going on. But he was the strongest warrior of one of the strongest military races, so he assumed that he didn't need to know his inferiors. They could see the fight well enough at night to prevent the Sakari being massacred in their beds. 
relying on them more than that was weakness. Trash Dragon Leader Zar reporting. Dominator, we must abandon this town. The humans are, are flanking us on both sides. Yes, I know. They're attacking on all sides of these uh, lackluster fortifications. No, no, not that just tactically, strategically. They, they have two forces heading towards the only decent bridge in the area. For, fortunately, Hawkley to tell noticed humans sending forces way out east and check on them. When we found what they were doing, we checked the west and sure enough, we had another force. We've been able to slow them down, but didn't you tell me the Z were the best night fighters on Nova? We, we are, but the Tell is outnumbered six to one, and uh, half of those are Atri, who are pretty good night fighters. No, normally, we do hit and run tactics to tire them out, but, but that doesn't work when the Atri are riding and we're on foot. Their horses let themselves be ridden in the wilderness at night, and they're fresh. No, they ride on human backs like carrying children. Where are they getting these new forces? New forces? What new forces? Did you not notice the same banners over and over again? There have been three attacks since nightfall and not one of them had fresh units. There were wounded coming over the wall each time. We've been fighting the same people for over eight hours. We'll lose a lot of the Riga Guard, but... If we dump all of our equipment, retreat now. My warriors have fought all for over three hours minimum. I've thrown every company into the front line and kept them longer than any battle I've known. Uh, one after another, they fought to exhaustion. They can barely walk to the toilet. The reserves have fought as long as the main force. We have no Zakari who can fight. That's why only Z are on the walls. Davik interrupted. Haven't you got it yet? I told the truth, but I also lied. Yes, you defeated my main force, but you haven't defeated the main human force. I am a lord, not the king, and obey his grace King Ryan the Merciful. The numbers I gave you were accurate for your slave system, but humans don't use slaves. The land is tilled by humans. About 7,000 of them on my lands, and another 90,000 on the lands and the other lords. But don't worry, they don't all fight. Only military-aged males, so about 35% of the total. But if they fight, how can they farm? Because most of them only train part-time. They are called militia. Part of the payment for the land is military service, so yes, I have less than 3,500 fighters, and 3,000 have retreated, but they came back, and that's why we always kept reserves, so you couldn't chase down units before we rallied them. Like most military races, you don't really rally, do you? You either defeat your enemy, or you get tired and stop. There's a reason that humans use more armor than most forces. It draws out the fight. Now, of course, the militia are not the best soldiers. Working in the fields for ten or more hours a day does build stamina, though. And of course, you wouldn't know that, having never sweated for more than four hours a day in your entire life. Of course, I have a force of professional soldiers and knights that train full-time to provide the quality, to stiffen the quantity. But they are not the best humanity has to offer. That would be the King's Legion. They were 50 miles away. If they ride and then walk beside the horses, they can make it in less than eight hours, including prepping their horses. The United Knights Infantry Company won't be far behind. They aren't slowed down by having to corral pack animals, because they are the pack animals. Before we were taken to this world, a general named Morris showed how much more efficient this is. No! I am the Supreme Dominator. I beat your best main force. I beat your best warriors. They were not our main force. They were not our best warriors. They have not been beaten, but there is a chance for survival. A defeated leader can simply kneel, beg for forgiveness, and ask to be made a vassal, working for the victor. It's how the Kanai came to serve in my army. It's how the... Summon your officers and tell them this is what must happen. 
You, you scum! You're lying about everything! The Z leader moved behind the Supreme Dominator and asked a simple question. Is it true your Sakari won't be able to fight for hours? I know you don't have our stamina, but... Yes, but by tomorrow... Lord Davik's voice went hard. My offer is for tonight only. The Supreme Dominator struck out with all his fatigued strength, fading even to break a tooth. I reject your offer. The last thing Khan ever heard was a spurt of his own blood and Tsar saying, the, the offer wasn't for you. End of story. Story number two. We refuse the Terran proposal written by Weijin Warrior. The Terrans and the Namphutians stared at each other across the table. We refuse the Terran proposal, the ten-foot-tall Zeno stated with quivering tentacles. It is intolerable. But uh, see here, the leader of the Terrans said, if good men sit down and talk, acceptable solutions may be intolerable and inexcusable. This is not the time for monkeys. Chapter. This is time for war. This is time for extermination. Let me have a quick word, my colleagues, the human said as he stepped away from the table. It, it'll only be a minute or so. The Terran delegation discussed briefly between themselves before the leader stepped up to the table again, bang showing. So, are you quite sure that you want to declare war on Terra? Or uh, possible Terrans? Yes, the spokes being for the Numpus delegation hissed. Your hot-blooded species is an affront to the goddess and must be exter- Sure, sure, the Terran interrupted as two of the other Terrans brought their manipulatory digits together above their heads. And just to be clear, you also reject the idea of adhering to the Geneva Convention as amended for interspecies warfare for this war. The mere idea of rules in war is a human madness and an affront to the goddess. Yes, just checking. One of the other Terrans came up and handed the leader a data pad. All right, so the war is definitely on, you're sure about that, and it's going to be a total war. No, no rules. One of the human digits hovered over a big red button on the data pad. We're going to exterminate your sorry excuse for babbling sentient. Great! The human exclaimed as he pushed the button. I tell you, the Boffins have been itching for this chance for years. They're still working on the exact details, but in about five minutes, we'll attack one third of your planets with some interesting pathogens that we've developed to infect non-Terran life forms. One third with a range of fun new chemical weapons, and the last third we're keeping in reserve for some of the other experiments in xenocidal warfare. Uh, what? In the seven nanocycle? How can you order that so fast? And uh, pathogens? Chemicals? Xenocidal? What? You don't have an instant communication over interstellar distances? We worked that trick out a long time ago. It is an interesting side effect of a project to link the cores of several stars to make a region-wide Nova Bomb. <laughs> Nova Bomb? What madness is this? Oh, we're unlikely to use that one right off the bat. We need that data of weapon tests first. Your species is insane! Sure we are, buddy. Oh, and if you want to surrender unconditionally, we can still call off the Boffin's fun field tests. You've got four minutes left. The Nemtuths looked at each other, tentacles stiff as the Terran smiled brightly at them. S -s -s surrender on what conditions, Terran? Unconditionally. That means that you give up. And we give no guarantees, reassurances, or promises. This is... This is not how things are done. This is an affront to the goddess and to... It is how things are done now. No rules in war, remember? Oh, and it's three minutes, by the way. But how can we be assured that you will not go ahead with the... 
This monkey business as if there's no reassurances. You can't. But you can hope we'll feel merciful, which I assume is an affront to the goddess. Most of the things we do seems to be. Uh, two and a half minutes. The Xeno seemed to shrink and shrivel. We will uh, surrender. Unconditionally. The Namputhian's spokesbeam looked towards the rest of the group before replying, Unreservably, uh, but with some hope. Great, the human said as he held up the data pad. I'm going to need your signature here, here, and uh, here. And from the rest of you guys too, if you don't mind. One by one, the Namputhians signed and were escorted out, heads so low their tentacles dragged on the floor. As the last one left, the head of the Terran delegation turned to the others. High five, gentlemen, they bought it. <laughs> Nerva bombs and instant interstellar communications, said the one who had given him the data pad. Why are Xenos so gullible? I guess, the head of the delegation said as he grinned, that if they believe you'll break the laws of war, they'll believe anything. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps, Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomerwaffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnold, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.